Am I supposed to have a clicker or anything? You got the clicker? No, I don't want the clicker. I hate the clicker. It's too much responsibility. Oh, am I live? So they can like hear what I'm saying right now? Okay. I didn't mean that about the clicker thing. I can handle a clicker. It's no problem. Uh, good morning. I hope everybody's doing all right this morning. Um, as always, we've been slinging stuff together here in the room. But uh, as always, the guys pulled it together. So I think we got some pretty cool stuff today. We had talked earlier on the uh, solar applications with the self-contained meters. And now we're going to hit the transform rate of stuff, which obviously gets a little bit more complicated vectorially in some other ways. So we're going to take a look at all that. And uh, so I just wanted to uh, get something out there. I've been catching some flack, and so I want to go ahead and get it out there. Okay, the hat. Obviously, by now, y'all know that, yeah, I went to LSU. Okay, so everybody's asked me after the first game, the guys in the back wore me out. Okay, so I'm just telling you. I know we're not going to have a good year this year, and, and I'm okay with that, all right, because of last year. So y'all can give me all the grief you want everywhere I go. They want to give me a hard time. I'm fine with that. You don't think I understand the SEC? I understand the SEC. I'll tell you a quick little story about that. Halloween, this was after we had beaten Tennessee on the last play of the game many years ago, and so when Halloween came, I'm sitting there at the house, and I'm usually never at home. You know, think about how much I travel and Halloween where it hits, so it's just rare that I'm at home. I happened to be home that year. So I was going to set out a pumpkin with just some candy in it on a TV tray and put a little sign saying, you know, take one or two pieces, thank you, happy Halloween, you know, something like that. Well, not being in the Halloween thing a lot, I didn't know. I guess they bring the little guys out early. So I'm out there getting ready to get set up. I open my front door. Now, on my front door, I've got an LSU magnet. It's about this big, okay? So obviously I have to keep the glass door locked in front of it or there'd have been damage to the door or house. So I have some protection there. So little man, I, I, I go to open my door up and there's this little dude, and I mean little bitty guy dressed in Batman from head to toe, serious utility belts, boots. He had everything Batman you could have, right? When I open my front door, he's trying to pull that magnet off of my front door and it pulls him up into my house. He trips on the stoop. And now I got Batman right there in my foyer. I'm looking at him. And he's trying to pull this off. And I said, hey, buddy, what are you doing? And he said, my dad hates LSU. Now, when he says it with the Batman mask on, it was awesome already, you know. And I said, oh. And I said, well, you know, you can't just take people's stuff. Like, I'm going to give him a life lesson or something. I said, hey, buddy, you can't just take people's stuff. You know, that's mine. He looks up at me with the Batman mask and says it just so serious and goes, I'm Batman. I said, dude, here, let me get you that sign. Here's my wallet. He had me wrapped around his finger like that. But, yeah, I understand the SEC thing, okay? So, anyway, moving on. So, we are going to uh, talk about solar applications today. But you know me, we're going to start out with a prayer, and then we're going to jump into it. All right? Father, thank you so much for this day, a day for us to learn our craft better, to uh, learn new things involved in our, in our vocations out there. And, Father, I'm just uh, I'm excited what's going to happen here uh, in the next few weeks because uh, ultimately I know that it's all in your hands and you make all the decisions, Lord. And the politicians and everybody want to think they're in control, but they're really not when it all boils down to it. And we know that as Christians. And uh, so we, we're going to put our faith in you, Father. We're just going to lift this country up. Uh, you know what we need. You know the, th the, the desires of our hearts and you know what's going on in this country. So we're just going to lift it up to you, Lord, and just put it in your hands. So thank you so much for what's about to happen. And we're going to put our faith in you. Thank you so much for this day. And I'll lift up all the folks in our industry that put themselves in harm's way to serve other people. Uh, that's the, the Christian mantra, isn't it? So serving others and not worried about yourself. So they put themselves out there in harm's way for us. And, Father, we really appreciate them. So uh, thank you for all those people and the people that have to support them and keep them out there. So let's just have a great day today and learn something. And most of all, I say all of these things according to the will of the one who paid it all, my brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's rock and roll. So Mullins has the clicker. So we are, so I'm kind of his mercy a little bit. So we're quarantined, webinar series 15. Uh, are we going to have a 25th celebration or something? We should have a 25th maybe, celebration. Maybe we should. <laughs> we really should. Yeah, maybe we'll show some bloopers or something. Okay. <laughs> Lots of those. <laughs> Mullins burst out like. <laughs> um, so coming up, uh, so today we're doing the solar applications on, uh, actually we're not doing that today. We are doing on transformer rated stuff. So um, I love it when I get to get Mullins. So, uh, and he's over here going, ah, that's, I love it. All right, so uh, <laughs> if he wasn't a perfectionist, I wouldn't love him so much. <laughs> really? All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna... Yeah, I put that technical bit in there. Does that have Mullins' face on it? All right, so, 
So here's the agenda for today, folks. We're going to talk about uh, watts of R and VA. You have to a little bit if you're going to get into this, just to understand things. And then we're going to get into some stuff that uh, the four quadrant metering. And this is interesting because Mullins and I were already talking about it this morning. So getting your head around it. But this is the nomenclature that we're using. You're hearing it more and more. Solar is getting more and more. All this is happening. So it really benefits not only the engineers that are behind the guys that are out in the field, but the field guys need to know this as well. Um, so it tells them where, where they're going to have their negative power factors, where or not, and all that. So we're going to get into that. And what was interesting that Mullins told me about that he discovered uh, in looking at this stuff is the difference between the IEC and IEEE conventional power factor. And I did not realize that. Y'all, If y'all haven't seen it before, it's going to throw you for a loop. It did me. Um, we're also going to do vector diagrams, as I said, in the four quad quadrants. We're going to talk about that and how it affects us and hits us uh, as a utility. And then we've got examples of sites using the four quadrant metering. And then we're going to do a verification of four quadrant sites. Okay, so we're actually going to do tests uh, like we always do. So we're going to tell you about that. So uh, Mullins is going to jump into starting on talking about watts of R and VA. And then when we get to the right point in there, I'm going to jump in and uh, do some testing for y'all. All right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, like John said, we really want to, I really want to kind of, you know, hit home on the idea of watts, bars, and VAs and really talk about four quadrant meteor because that is critical uh, to understanding these solar applications because because you're dealing with delivered and received energy uh, so often uh, this four quadrant meteor is critical to understand and like John mentioned the the IEC versus IEEE convention for power factor is a programming issue I want to cover to make sure you guys understand that uh, if you see an issue out in the field so uh, watts Everybody should know that. That's actual useful work. That's going to be, if you want to look at it at a mathematical concept, that's going to be your voltage times your current times your power factor value that you see. So that's what we bill the customer is watt or watt. Uh, that's an energy value is watt hours. That's, that, is the, that is the time value of, of energy consumed over a period of time. Uh, on the flip side, VARS is your non-useful power. Um, but that's used and seen when you have a very inductive or capacitive load down the line. And VA is that total power. So that's, that's the watts and bars. That's maybe that, that power triangle thing. That's the last part of the power triangle. And it's the simplest because all it is is voltage times current. We don't take into account a, a power factor like bars and watts do. A uh, nice little way, I mean, we're Christians here in, in the South, so we don't like to use beer, we use root beer. I did, this wasn't my picture, by the way. So the, uh, the VA is the, is the total power, so think of it as the foam plus the liquid is your VA. And if you just look at the liquid, the actual root beer itself, that's what's useful power. Uh, that's what's being billed to the customer. And VARS is non-useful power. That's not what's being billed to the customer. So how do utilities compensate for that? They Sometimes they'll do power factor penalties, uh, which is a good way to kind of compensate when you have a very, very uh, inductive load that uh, the customer is presenting. So where do VARS come from? Uh, most of us come from the inductance on the power line coming down, coming, coming down to, the, to the customer. Um, also, the customer can also worsen their power factor based on their load and therefore it can cause more positive VARs in that situation. Uh, for four quadrant meter, we're, talk about, we're going to talk about this a lot um, and we'll get into detail but this quadrant one, two, three, four, this is kind of like a table but I'm going to show you a kind of the graphical concept on that so you guys can see how the <laughs> how the engineer, engineers and the documentation looks at quadrants versus how we see it in a vector diagram in the field. So this is, if you look, if you open up a metering handbook or you talk to your engineer down the hall, this is what he's gonna look at. So he's gonna look at the, these particular power consumption. So the delivered power is coming from left to right and delivered is positive energy. Right, and, we'll, we'll, and when we when John gets to his demonstration, we'll show what the difference is between delivered and received. So delivered is positive energy, and received is the opposite. It's negative energy. It's not there on the left. So it's going to be a negative power factor in this case that you're driving. You're driving a positive, obviously voltage current times a negative power factor, which gives us negative watts. 
um, and then notice that you'll see that you'll see the quadrant is going from from top left or top right to one to four three to two now this is different on when you look at a vector diagram in the field so I'll be clear about that yeah, like I just said. <laughs> so what we're showing here, what you see as far as a mathematical concept and what you actually see in the field, same. But the good news is I'm going to give you guys kind of the key to help, help figure that out. Okay, what quadrant am I talking about? Because that is critical when we talk about the metering point. Quadrant one, this is a very, very common lagging uh, power factor you're going to see in the field. So think of this like a non-solar site. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty obvious what you're going to see a commercial industrial is you kind of a shifting power factor. That's about a 20, 15, 20 degree phase shift lagging. That's going to be what we call quadrant one. Notice that the documentation quadrant one is over there at the top right and the power master vector is on the flipped it. It's on the bottom right. Okay. That's a commonly inductive load. Quadrant two, now here's where we start getting into the solar sites. This is where you're going to see this a lot in quadrant two and quadrant three, which is going to be above it, uh, solar sites with capacitive load. So this is when they're in generation, but now they're delivering as well. So that power factor is going to shift a little bit and it's going to shift uh, as a capacitive. This also could be, could be representative uh, if a capacitor bank is there on the solar site that's actually causing this artificial, well, not artificial, I suppose they are, supposedly artificial uh, power factor. And people have just out in the field before told me, you know, they go to a site and they want to load, they got a big capacitor bank there and, they, and with that thing still on, they're showing capacitance, so it throws them off when they first see this. Exactly. So, same thing, yeah, when people put in capacitor banks, but they don't have anything going on. And we're kind of giving you guys tools because let's say you don't know this was a solar site until you're trying to figure out, you know, what, what kind of load do I have here? Um, so hopefully this, this kind of this will kind of help you guys when you guys are out there plugging into these sites. It will give you kind of this basic knowledge to understand what I'm looking at. So that, that was one, that was two. Now we're in quadrant three. This is a solar site with an inductive load. So notice it's up here at the top left quadrant, which is what we call quadrant three. So quadrant two and quadrant three are commonly where you're going to see on your solar sites when it becomes, when it's in generation mode, right? Lastly, quadrant four, this would be, this could be a solar site, but probably not. This would probably be more likely a standard commercial site that's got a leading power factor. Most of the time we see this in quadrant four when you have a, uh, either a substation mm -hmm. or a customer down the line with a capacitor, idling capacitor bank. That's right. And that causes that leading power factor. That's right. Can you go back one, Chris? Yes. Um, just to equate to what we've talked about before and to, to relate to the, uh, to the meter tech mine, you'll notice here on A phase, that looks like when we have polarity reversal as well. And remember, that does the same thing. It, it creates a negative power factor, which creates negative watts. Yes. So anytime you see that, and we've done that several times on these webinars, when we've created a, a polarity reversal, that red, that A phase looks just like that. And it does the same thing. It creates the negative power factor. And when you have the negative power factor, you get negative watts. And that's what we're talking about here. Yeah, and to be clear, too, when we're talking about these quadrants, I'm fo follow where A phase current is. That's where we're, that's what we're talking about. So uh, hopefully I'm not confusing anybody because B and C are in different quadrants. That's right. We're, we're calling a quadrant where the, the A phase current, which is, which is reference to the A phase sure. voltage. And any of you that use the equipment, you know that we yeah. always use A is, that's going to be the reference voltage. Right. And so A is typically always going to be the reference. So anytime Chris is talking about all this stuff, he's always talking about A phase. Yep. Yeah. Again, quadrant four is a lead, typical leading power factor or something you see with a site with a capacitor bank that is idling or active. Yep. Okay, now if four quadrant meeting wasn't as complex as it is, and now you guys get to deal with power factor. So there are, and I just learned this maybe a few months ago, that there are actually two different conventions, two different styles of power factor when it comes to for quadrant metering. There is an IEC and there's an IEEE. Um, IEC is commonly used in um, European countries um, and IEEE is mostly used in North American countries. Ironically, most of the industry follows the IEC yep. concept and as do we. Power metrics, we follow the IEC concept. 
I've discovered though that a particular meter, I won't, I won't say what manufacturer it is, but this one particular meter manufacturer follows IEEE. Why is that a problem? Because it could be totally, You'll see totally wrong second. metering. <laughs> You'll see here in a second. Right? Yeah. Okay. So um, <laughs> notice again, I'm they're using the academic version of what the quadrants are. And I want to kind of show you guys in this next slide. I want to spend a lot of time on this slide showing this is the kind of the key, I'll call it, to if you're looking at a power master vector diagram, where, what quadrant am I in? So the, a commonly lagging power factor is going to hit the one, and then it's going to move over to two and three and four clockwise. So starting at, if I start at three o'clock and I'm heading down to six o'clock, I'm in one. Now I'm going back into two, three, and four. And that's, and that's the A phase current. That's A phase current. A phase current. Yeah. The voltage is going to stay there because that's our reference. And what we're talking about to make sure everybody understands, we're talking about where that current ends up. So where the current moves to once we connect up. So as that current shifts around and goes from quadrant to quadrant, mm -hmm. it affects our power factor directly. So again, this is this, I'm representing the same thing we're showing here in an academic version, which is what you would see in the field. So yeah. notice it's kind of flip-flopped. One and two are at the top on the academic version, mm -hmm. and then one and two are at the bottom when we, when we see it in the field. Um, I've talked with Jones about this, and I'm going to push to get a preference to show our vector where we, where we can flip this around so this will be less confusing for you guys in the future. Right. Because I want to be able to make this guys easy for you, so you can you can look at the academic or look at the the more accepted version either way, okay. So the big difference here is looking at quadrant one and quadrant two. So if you look at quadrant quadrant three and quadrant four for a second, notice that everything's the same, right? Negative watts, negative R's, negative power factor in quadrant three, and then I've got positive watts in quadrant four. Okay, that's that's fine. But notice in the bottom two quadrants, one and two. It, the difference between the IEC and the IEEE version is totally different as far as how it how it puts the sign for power factor. Again, if we if the power master is measuring in quadrant two, we're going to see a negative power factor. But on the IEEE convention, you see a positive power factor. the The reason why this this issue came up is I was dealing with a uh, customer, and he was he was reading his meter on SCADA. And SCADA was reporting a non-update value. That means that SCADA could not recognize a negative power factor because the way the meter was, because it was in that quadrant one, it was kind of shifting. So it could not see the negative value at all. And so I've seen another manufacturer, uh, and, I'll, and I'll call this one out, uh, Schneider <laughs> or Ion or PowerLogic, however you want to call it. They, they, they change the name often. You can actually change the, the notation. You can be IEC or IEEE, but this other made meter manufacturer, which I can't name, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, you cannot change it. And so you're gonna have to deal with these, these uh, SCADA issues until they finally figure out that they, can, they need to be able to swap it, right? Um, so again, the customer called me and I asked him like, why, you know, my, I see a negative power factor on my power master, but I'm seeing a uh, positive power factor on my meter and that's why because it's the way the meter's been programmed so be very very clear when you do your programming and find out which convention which power factor convention the meter is actually using luckily the, the vast majority i've seen are using the iec convention so we should be yeah. good but just this one particular meter it was using the IEEE and it's the only one they were using. And on our last solar one you mentioned, you knew some companies that had done that, right? They had programmed their meters so it would always come out positive. Yeah, I'll show that. That's actually in this oh, slide, it? yes, okay. yeah. So uh, kind of an overview of solar sites. Um, if you remember the last, the last um, presentation we did on self-contained, I talked a lot about uh, the billing uh, as far as net metering and um, that, that's all, that all applies here for commercial industrials as well. So you're always measuring power received and, pa and power de delivered. Um, in the past, they used to use two meters and now they've gone, now most of the meters are now all four quadrant bi-directional. So uh, there's no need to do that anymore. And that's kind of what we're, we're assuming. And what would happen if you had a bi, if you didn't have a bi-directional and you got out on this? If you didn't have a bi-directional, you would, you, would, you would not measure any received energy. That's yeah. when we've done it here on here and we didn't get a pulse. Right. Yeah. Yes. So we've got some older meters that would not measure that. But uh, we had a customer called us yesterday and he was trying to just, def 
he had to go back at the site two, three, four times just so he can get the programming right because he couldn't simulate it, right? Uh, so he had to go back out. That's not working. All right, come back in, reprogram it, take it back out. And so he was trying to figure out, and that's kind of what, what John was re referring to, is that we have, the, we have equipment that can actually help do that um, uh, it, based, on, based on what he needed. Okay, so let's go into actual uh, case studies. This was actually, this is actually a solar farm. This is what we call front of the meter. This is a utility scale uh, solar applications uh, right down the road from us in Knoxville. So it's a one megawatt solar farm, 4,600 panels <laughs> right there, and they built this about 10 years ago. It's got uh, four DC to AC converters um, so remember the self-contained presentation, I talked a little about the inverters, those photovoltaic inverters, that's what, that's what we're talking about here. And it's got an 8.4 kV transformer. So um, this one's kind of an unusual one, uh, and I don't recommend this, and I, and, and I apologize for kind of calling the utility out. Um, so they, they did put a bi-directional meter in there, which is an, an Elster meter, which is a good meter. They got 205 CTs and 71 PTs. However, when they wired up the secondary coming to the meter, they flipped everything around. So when the meter is in generation mode, it's actually measuring as delivered. I'm not a fan of that because I want to know the difference, but their, their assumption is, well, it's always generating. So why do I, why do I want to flip it back around? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I think it's confusing to someone to come out there who's doing right. maintenance on the meter. So this is a leading power factor. Notice that it's shifting you know, up. Um, and again, they rewired the, this actual site to always be looking as it is in delivered mode, which is not really, it's actually in received mode. Um, but those of you who have just got, went through my quadrant part, do you remember what quadrant this is actually in? If you look at SIA, secondary current A, what quadrant is that in? One, two, three, or four? I apologize for the delay. Yeah, I'll, I'll help you help you out. Look at the IEC convention. Okay, it's quadrant four, guys. So it's, it's that leading power factor and that's shifting up. So guys need to learn those quadrants. Remember, we're following that current on A phase. So what quadrant is that current on A phase in right now? You can see it sitting right up there. And remember the convention over on the right side, it went from bottom up, it went one, then four, then over to the left, yep. it came around that way. So that would be four, so yeah. Uh, this one actually had a lot of they had a lot of harmonic filters on it notice that there was like uh, without those filters they had like uh, went up to the 70th, 70th harmonic i think it's the most i've ever seen that's pretty crazy but uh, they did a good job keeping filters on there to keep the power quality uh well and notice that the, the waveform looks pretty good um and when we did a when we did a, a meter customer load test came in perfect and remember quadrant four i've got negative vars right so that's why you're seeing a, a, a negative VAR hour measurement there because the current is leading. Now, if they meter this, quote unquote, the right way, <laughs> it'd be different, right? Yep. Okay. We also did a, a CT test on it. Um, there was nothing really unusual about it. Um, if, you, if you've been on John's uh, uh, classes, you know that if my primary current is a 180 out, my secondary current's gonna follow that. So will I get a fail on my CT test? Wrong, you get right. I'm not gonna get a fail, I'm gonna get a pass because my primary, even though it's 180 out, is following my secondary, I will get a pass because they're both in phase with each other. So don't, so when you see that, you'll see that everything is in phase and everything's gonna pass. Um, but do, do pay attention to the player, of the CT to make sure you catch your probe on right. Yep. Um, and then your, your duck bill should always be white side up. Label to the load. These CD tests came out virtually perfect. Um, it was this was an excellent site, I will say. Yeah, that's pretty good. We also did a burden measure. There was no issues we saw as far as the burden measurement. 
Uh, I think it was a 0.5 uh, ohm CT, well with under under its uh, burden rating. So that was good. That's tight. This is a this is another site we went to. This is out in Arizona. Uh, it's actually a hospital with solar panels on the roof. So they're they're still getting utility power, but they're supplementing with uh, with this, some solar panels. So it's 87 kW there at the at the hospital. Um, this one, I believe, is wired the way I would prefer to see it. So they can they actually see it when it's in generation mode. You can see that it's 180 out virtually. Notice that A phase and C phase are a little bit, uh, I'd say, lag leading. Uh, compared to uh, B phase. So that's probably, they're probably consuming something on A and C to cause that, that power factor shift. Harmonics are pretty terrible, but that's not that uncommon to see based on the inverter. Notice that the currents look kind of like a square, kind of here. And you, that that that's usually shows some, a switching power supply or an inverter, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty common in the technology on those solar power, power plants. Another last one, this, is a, this was a U-Haul out in uh, Kingman, Arizona. Solar panels, similar situation. Now this was a single phase three wire using a form four meter. Now if you, if you remember right, if you look at where's A and B, they're swapped, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got, you, again, you're in generation mode. And when we ran a customer load meter test, we actually got a negative registration, which is correct. That's right. A lot of, some, I get phone calls and Ray gets phone calls because customers are concerned they get a negative, inter, negative registration. And then they say, is that correct? The answer is yes, because it is in generation mode. You're going to get negative watts. Therefore, you're going to get a negative registration. And so when it went delivered mode, you can see that it kind of shifted right back. And then we got positive registration. This is very common. Um, and really, when you start getting into the, I'm sorry, the harmonics, um, again, harmon current harmonics going to be high. Uh, over 20% is going to be pretty common. So don't get too worried about that. That's really just the technology that you've got out there. Um, and like I mentioned with this 3S, this 4S meter, you got positive, then you got negative. I'm mean, sorry, you got negative energy flow and positive energy flow. So this is on a customer low conditions. We do recommend that you want to make sure that meter is correctly measuring power, both received and delivered. Um, so you can use a load box for this, and John's going to show this in a minute. Um, you can use it with a three series or with a seven series uh, to, to be doing that. But yes, we always do recommend checking the CTs and PTs as well. PTs you can measure just with the secondary voltage if you don't have a PT probe, but with a CT we always recommend doing a ratio, uh, ratio only. So in summary, before I swap it, switch it over to John, is um, you're going to see solar sites more and more. Um, residential side, commercial side, uh, those are, those are the ones that are going that we're calling we call it back of the meter. Ones that are trying to get off the grid, you're going to see that more and more, mm -hmm. especially when they start getting these incentives to get off to get off the grid. It's going to be more of an issue for the utility. Um, know your four quadrant metering. Uh, Steve Hudson did a presentation around June, and it's actually up on our Power Metrics webinars. You may want to review that again because it's, it's in detail. Four quadrant metering. A lot of it was used in this same presentation because I wanted to review it. But you got to know power qu four quadrant, and you got to know your power factor notation when you start dealing with the solar sites. You got that's kind of your basic knowledge to be able to verify this. Because if you don't have this correct, meter programming is not right. And we always want to recommend checking energy flow in both directions, both delivered and received. Um, so we do that with a load box uh, because you can only do you can only verify really one thing at a time when you're doing a customer load. And that's what I'm gonna. Hand it over to Mr. John. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let's do some testing. So the first thing I would like to do is just go over a little bit. I don't want to skip things. I, I think repetition is always good. So I'm going to talk just real quick about, I'm using the combo bench today. So, um, oh, I better get all my headgear on. I'm using the combo bench today. Let me go grab my hard hat. Whew, 
I'd have gotten lit up like a Christmas tree after that. All right, so, so um, I just wanted to talk about the test switch over here because I'm on the combo bench today. So uh, it's different than what we've been using. And this has a different test switch. And I don't think you can talk enough about the basic safety things and the basic stuff. So I'm going to go back to something just when I first looked at this for a second, I just did my quick check on that uh, test switch just to make sure what was what. Because remember, we've had some pretty funky ones. This is for another customer that uh, we made benches for. So I just wanted you to show this is another different test switch. But how did I get in here and start connecting things up? You know, the first thing, remember I've always uh, preached about the phenolic barriers and where my voltages are. So you can see right here and here. Can they see that, Jerry? You can see these two phenolic barriers here and these two phenolic barriers over here. Well, that's telling me that I got a voltage here and a voltage here, so it only makes sense that I've got my voltage here, right? So my voltages, you can see my voltages right here. I've got green, blue, and orange are my voltages. And now, just to try and, because they wanted to throw me a little bit of a curve, I've got some, you see light colors on some of these handles. We never like that, but it is what it is. So then in that case, I also know when I open this, that's got to be my shunt blade, right? So there's my shunt. So next to it, and I can see there, okay, I've got my return where I've got my spot to put in my duck bill. So you can see here, and that's how I made my connections. So I came in here with my alligator clips, and I came in the bottom of here for A, B, and C on my voltages. I came in the bottom there with my red, yellow, blue. And then I also came in here with my duck bills on A, B, and C, okay? And then I've got my neutral down here on the end. So that's where I made my neutral connection for my voltage, okay? So just wanted to go over that real quick. You, know, you always know, look for those phenolics between the, uh, for the voltages, because it's going to separate your voltages out. Then just do a quick check on your shunt and returns, and you can figure out which ones those are. Then you make your connections okay, all right? All right, so we're going to go over here, and we're going to, uh, I've picked out a site. I've got a site that's 9S, so I'm going to go in here. But what do we always say? Let's take a look at the vectors first. Okay, so let's take a look at the vectors first. So we're going to hit. Okay. Okay, right here. Ready? Yes, sir. All right. So here's what we got on the screen. Now, we've talked about this. You know, we talked about taking a look at those, uh, at the vectors first before I get going. So if I need to toggle to my primary and take a look to what Chris was saying earlier, my secondary is always going to follow that primary, right? So I've got to watch that. So maybe my issue is on my primary and not my secondary. So if I toggle between the primary and secondary vectors and I don't see any change, it stays with polarity reversal on there, then my problem's on the primary. But when I toggle over to the primary and I don't get the polarity reversal, but when I toggle back over to the secondary and I see the polarity reversal, then I know my problem's on the secondary side. And typically, a large majority of the time, it's going to be the connections there on those secondary terminals on that CT. Okay, so in this case, I'm looking at this. So, we always talk about possibilities. So I'm out here in the field and I look at this and I think, what could be the possible issues here? Because those are some jack-looking vectors initially, right? So I'm looking at it. Now let's discount for a second. Okay, I'm at a solar site. Okay, I know if I'm standing at a solar site. Okay, yeah, you got me there. But let's just say if we were just looking at this, what could be some other things that could cause this? I literally could have all of, if you had a contractor out there and he was wiring them wrong, he had a guy out there wiring them wrong or incorrectly, he could have wired all three phases at this site wrong on the CTs, right? So it would give me polarity reversal on all three phases. Doesn't happen a lot, but don't tell me it hasn't happened because I know it has. So that could be another reason that every one, all three phases are 180 degrees out. That'll show polarity reversal on them, right? So, um, but in this case, you're standing at a solar site, so you say to yourself, well, that makes sense. They should all be backwards because clearly now we're in receiving power or generation mode, and I'm looking for, I'm set up to look for us, you know, delivering power to somebody, so when I hook it up, I see all of them showing polarity reversal. And we look right over here and remember this is the same thing as if we had polarity reversal from just one of the CTs being swapped. All of my power factors are now negative. 
So that means we know we're going to get negative watts. There's no way around it. If I, let's say I had one of them that was, if the other, other two, uh, their total watts were more than that one that was negative, I'd still end up with some positive watts, right? We've seen that. We can lose 66% on one CT bar being wired backwards, but I still end up with some positive watts. In this case, ain't no way it's gonna happen because I got negative, negative, negative. So when we start taking each one of those individual phases and we start multiplying voltage times current times that negative power factor, I'm, I'm gonna end up with negative watts on A, negative watts on B, and negative watts on C. So I can assure you I'm gonna end up with total negative watts. I have to, right? Okay. So we just wanted to check that because we say we always do that. We're always gonna check it. <clears throat> so now I'm back out to, uh, to my menu here and I've chosen a site 9S. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a customer load test. And just before I start hitting the buttons and everything, in the chat room, when I run a customer load test, which means I'm going to use the CTs and PTs if they were there, and I'm going to use everything that's connected at this meter right now, and I'm going to measure, and I'm going to test this meter for registration, what would you expect to see on this? When I run this test right now, I'm going to run a customer load test for my, when I get my meter registration number, what would you expect to see? So I'm going to run a customer load test. There might be a hat in it for the right answer, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm going to go 30 seconds. And you know I always run 30 seconds or 3 revs, so we see whichever comes first. In case we have a very, very light load, I don't want to be standing there all day with mosquitoes swarming around my head 95 degrees. So I'm going to hit next. And remember, the customer load test is going to multiply the voltage times the current times the power factor. It's going to come up with a number of watts, and it's going to say, okay, you told me it should be 1.8 watts every time it pulses. Let me measure the watts and see if I concur with that. So, has anybody in the chat room yet said anything? Hello, is this thing on? Hello, my mic's on. All right, okay, just checking. I ought to give him name out some names in the chat room, see if I know anybody, and that way I'll yell at him and go, what's the answer? That's exactly right. Good job, Derek. Good job, Derek, because we know, right, we're getting negative watts on every single phase. We're going to get a total negative watt, so it's going to come out as a negative registration, right? And so that is correct for what, the way that we've, when we're looking at this customer load test on, at a solar array, this is what we should expect to see. Now remember to what Chris said earlier, if someone has programmed that meter so that it's not, it's gonna show a positive registration, it wouldn't show a negative here, okay? That would throw me a little bit if I'm standing at a solar farm looking at it, I would kinda go, huh. But if the, that would make me think to ask and make a call and check with someone and say, hey, did we program this meter so that it shows positive registration? Because I'm out here at the solar farm and it shouldn't, okay? If, there's nothing but, if you have nothing but solar on there, it shouldn't, okay? So now what I'm going to do is, and this is what some people do, they run, remember we've talked about this, you can run either a delivered or a received test when it comes to the phantom load test. You have that column, and we've done it on, on before, where we've changed that from received, excuse me, from delivered to received. You just opened up the drop down and changed it. So what I've created, and we'll see here, I'm going to go ahead and run a phantom load test. This is a test that I see people that do a lot of solar testing that they do. They want to go ahead and run it all three received. They want to run full load, light load, power factor delivered, full load, light load, power factor received. Okay, in case they're at somewhere where it's we got both going on. Okay, so let's. Let's see right here. So I'm going to hit my drop down. I'm going to pick one I created called Sola. Right here. Let me do it again. So I've picked out one called Sola. Now look what I'm doing here. I am, just like I said, my finger's going every which way. I've got uh, full load, power factor, lot load, and look over here, the first three are delivered under flow. Then the, the second three, I've got full load, power factor, lot load, but they're received, RCD there. 
So I just went in the box, hit my drop down button, it opened up the box and I had a choice between delivered or received. I just chose, it defaults to delivered, I chose received on those last three and, and made them receive. That's all I did, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, I'm gonna hit the button. But then it should tell me, ah. Now remember, we've done these before on these webinars. It's different when I get ready from the customer load to the phantom load, right? Because now I'm using the load box. So I'm taking the CTs out of it. So the very first move I make is to open up these shunts. Okay? So it opened up my shunts. Are you like the two red handles on the same one? <laughs> so that's why you gotta look over that test switch before you jump in there. It's one you hadn't seen before. So what I'm doing now is I'm leaving the, the connections at the bottom. Remember, you always connect at the bottom at the return blade because you're always having to get around that handle to make the connection. So that's our little tip to keep in our head to make sure we're making the connection in the right place. We always go down for, on the return blade. We're going to be at the bottom. We're going to always get around that long stroke handle down there. Then when I come up here on the return side, excuse me, on the uh, shunt side, I come up here to the top. We've done this a bunch of times. I'm at the bottom of the return, top of the shunt. So I come over here and I go. Bottom of the return, top of the shunt. Bottom of the return, top of the shunt. There we go. So we're all connected up good. And no polarity on those jumpers, right? I uh, know. Oh, as far as the orange and the, yeah, 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 good point, Chris. And uh, we've said this before, that, that doesn't mean anything. That orange and gray was just so that you can keep track of them when stuff gets busy up in there. Right. But it doesn't have to be orange top. So you can see I deliberately left the gray in the middle up there, so it's not gonna cause us a problem. It doesn't matter. We did that just to dif differentiate when you get up in a can and stuff to keep track of them. Okay. So now remember, there's a load box involved. So we developed the PowerMaster product so that they do a few more checks for that. There's more, uh, we got to, now that the load box is involved, we got to worry about a little bit more about protecting the equipment, but more importantly, protecting the personnel. So we're going to check and make sure we got good connections. There's not something funky going on. We would hate for somebody to be leaning up against the can, watching his buddy work out there, and somebody cranks up a load box, right? And we don't have a clean connection. Uh, something kind of interesting while we're waiting this testing going on. John and I grabbed another meter, as an old Elster meter, I believe, put it in there. <laughs> we ran a simulation, you know, of a, a reverse energy flow, and we got no pulses. Can anyone think of why we didn't get, why we didn't get pulses? Because the meter wasn't a bi-directional meter, right? Um, I don't know if you guys have run across that, where you actually put an old meter into into something that should have bi-directional but that would be a problem so once once you're once you start having a very lagging power factor or you shift over to generation mode and you're you do not have a bi-directional meter that means you are not metering correctly and in some of our examples when we were talking about troubleshooting and stuff i think i remember we had that old uh, 5s meter didn't we and it wasn't bi-directional and so it was doing that, wasn't it? Didn't yes, it? yes, we have an old 5S We had well. that old 5S yeah. meter that was not directional. Remember, we wouldn't get any pulses. So that's another thing you were wondering, why don't you get pulses? We had said, okay, I walk up to a site, I connect up, I'm not getting pulses. This is one of the items on the list. I know it sounds crazy, but if it's not bi-directional and you're receiving power, this thing's not gonna do zilch. It's just gonna sit there dead. Okay, so that could be another one of the reasons why. It could be that you don't have the pickup in the right spot. You don't have the pickup connected correctly in the back. Um, it's not in test mode. You know, we'll add this one to the list. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not bi-directional, and I'm trying to receive power here, so it's going, eh. Uh, Virgil uh, made a comment in the, uh, in the chat room that says that he does have one, uh, one meter for solar generation. It is not bi-directional. He said the solar is connected to the line side of the meter, so at night there is no solar. Um, and he says, I see a small amount of power going backwards through the meter. So it don't, he can only see consumption during the day, right? So when the, right. when the sun's out. So even on a solar generator, it should be bi-directional, keep track of the inverter grid sensing power consumed. Yes, I agree with that, Virgil. Thank you. 
And John Young, yes, you are correct that if, I, if we did put that meter in, in the old days, and I remember seeing this, when I went out to a um, pump, it was, an, it was an oil, no, I'm sorry, yes, it was an oil pump, that's right. Mm. It was down in South Mississippi, and they had some oil pumps there. And so when the, when the oil pumped in one direction, the meter would try to run backwards because of the, the way the, the energy flow was. And so to combat that, this is an old mechanical meter, so this was 15 years ago probably. Mm. It was an old mechanical meter, and so to prevent that meter going backwards, they stuck a detent in the meter. Now, in, and John Young is right that if, if you had a detent in the meter, it would not register negative energy. So you're correct on that. John Young sent in a comment? He did. He's already finished his 15 mile run this morning and he's back on back at it. So we went through the first three, the full load power factor light load test. And you'll notice the numbers were all in green and they were all, I guess I'm gonna say they were, we were talking a little bit, but so those would be, we remember the first three that we ran were delivered. These next three are received, okay? So we run delivered and then we run received. So in this case, this is exactly what we expected to see happen, right? Now we're getting negatives right here, okay? I know there, these, are, these issues are coming up more and more. Um, and John, I, I, I want to do kind of a part two on this presentation to get more into um, some unique stuff. Like, for example, there was a customer we talked to in Indiana that had an interesting issue that we couldn't cover in this presentation today. So I'd like to get more involved in the, in the more the application side. So those of you who are listening, um, please feel free to, to send any kind of interesting issues or something you would like to see us cover on, I'll, I'll call it, solar applications transfer rated part two. So if you don't mind, send me an email. My email is chris.mullins at powermetrics.com for any kind of uh, issues or maybe if you have some, some test data from your power master that we can share, I'd love to, to do kind of a round two on this. Because I think this, this, this is becoming more important, guys. Um, so I want you guys to be really understanding it and, um, and hopefully at the end of this presentation, I do want you guys to be clear on four quadrant metering and power factor notation. If you guys can get those two straight, then you'll make me happy, okay? So you can see we finished up. So these are our three you can see here. So we had the received power, so now I'm gonna hit done. And we'll do our recall data. So we'll all remember, we always do a quick recall data before we disconnect everything. Make sure that it grabbed it. So I'm going to previous out of that. We will go to recall data. Go to 9S. Here we go. Expand. And we will go to today. Expand it out. And remember, it's a little Christmas tree diagram, so when you get to the phantom load test, you expand it out because you have three different tests. But in this case, oh, we got six. Usually you used to me only seeing three, right? Because I only run it in the delivered. This time I ran in delivered and received. So you see, we'll just take a look at the two full load tests. Here's the full load test, the first one. So we ran that delivered. Now we will go, we'll exit out, and we'll take a look at receive. So remember to always check and make sure that you've captured everything before you, uh, before you disconnect everything. Do a recall data and just make sure that you got all your information captured uh, while everything's still connected up. It's a pain in the neck when you miss it and have to go back. So. Um, 
So we hope you've gotten some stuff out of this. Remember, we're going to get into this a little bit more because uh, Chris is right. I mean, I went up into some areas that I didn't think would have a whole lot of solar, and then they started telling me about all the solar stuff going in. It's going in everywhere. Munis, co-ops, I use it does not matter. And it's like we were saying when we first started this. I mean, just personally going out there and testing with guys all day, I mentioned it and everybody went, they looked it up, and Massachusetts is one of the biggest solar states in the union. I'm like, but when they took me out there, I believed it after a day out there. They were huge, and they're out in the middle of nowhere. There was lots of them, so you just never know. So they are there everywhere, and it's just getting more and more and more. So you need to learn how to deal with it because you know what's going to happen. It always falls in our laps, right, to be able to test it. So uh, we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to, uh, to get We'll talk about it next Tuesday. Get out there and vote. And, uh, and uh, we just appreciate y'all's time, all right? Thanks a lot. God bless y'all. Be careful out there.